Good morning, Facebook and Instagram and any other platform that you might be watching me on, including my YouTube channel. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Rebecca. I'm a holistic health coach and homeopath. And I just pop in here every Monday to set a theme for the week to help us to become more conscious of what might be working for us um, in supporting us in making good decisions in our lives um, and what might be actually holding us back. So um, just giving you a theme, um, a thought, something to journal on, um, a simple practice each week. Uh, and you can watch me live or you can watch the replay and you're equally welcome to do both. What would be lovely is however you're watching is if you could just pop a little comment um, in the thread below this video, um, whether that's just an emoji or a question, anything you like. It would be lovely because it does help for uh, as many people as possible to see this video and that would be absolutely fabulous if you could help me do that. Um, so here in Ireland we're on a bank holiday uh, today so I'm not, I don't think that's the case in the UK but if you're watching in Ireland and I'm wishing you a, a really lovely day I hope you get to enjoy whatever you're you're doing on this um, bank holiday Monday. A little bit grey here um, but it's a holiday, so who cares? <laughs> um, so today I wanted to, to just talk about um, how you choose your healthcare professionals. And it, I was prompted to this by a few of my clients last week, um, new clients, who came to me because they are trying to manage chronic health issues. And they were talking about um, the relationship that they have, have uh, with the various consultants, um, you know, support uh, health professionals that they're already working with. And the tone for um, two of these clients um, struck me as being that, that they felt somehow on the back foot somehow um, a little bit intimidated, a little bit dominated by their, uh, the people they're working with and not really able to, to ask questions, to challenge, to, um, yeah, they felt kind of bullied actually um, by these health professionals. And it got me thinking as to how um, unproductive or counterproductive this can be. Um, now I can see Caroline's joining me. You're very welcome, Caroline. Good morning to you. Um, yeah, and I th I wondered, uh, well, I asked some questions actually, and I wondered how carefully, how diligently we actually choose the healthcare professionals that we work with. Now, funnily enough, I think I think there is um, there seems to be more time spent um, possibly researching or investigating or asking questions of holistic health practitioners than there are often with um, pharmaceutically based practitioners. Uh, most of the time it seems to be, oh, my GP referred me. Um, when I ask, you know, how did you find this person, um, this, this healthcare professional? Um, and it transpired anyway that, that most of the time the relationship seems to be an odd one. Um, when we think about what's actually happening here, we are employing as patients or clients, we are actually employing a healthcare professional. Oh, good morning, Regina. You're very, very welcome. Hope it's nice in Dublin. Weather's not great here, but I hear it's good on the East Coast. Um, yeah, just talking about choosing healthcare professionals and how a lot of people 
um, seem to be just going with whatever the referral is or just going with somebody that is kind of next up the ladder and just accepting whoever is allocated to them. Um, on Regina saying it's beautiful. Oh, very good. Enjoy it. Enjoy your day off. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to just change, to invite you to change that dynamic a little bit and just consider how much time you might devote to, um, you know, buying a, 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 some white goods, buying a car, buying a fridge, buying a hoover, buying almost anything, actually, that involves um, a big outlay of money. Um, and the questions that we ask around buying those things to make sure that they are actually right and appropriate for us, you know, even down to, you know, what colour it is or how it works. And we ask questions like, you know, who's made this um, this good, these goods, whatever they are. Um, what, and in the case of healthcare professionals, um, I would be asking, well, um, what is their reputation? What is their experience in the um, healthcare modality that I am actually after? So it all starts and um, ends really with you having clarity, really good clarity over what it is that you're trying to achieve when you're seeking the help and support of any kind of healthcare professional. It's very difficult to choose the best route if we don't really know where we're going. So the first thing is to sit down and work out, well, what do I actually want from this healthcare professional or from any healthcare professional, actually? What is it that I would like to achieve uh, in my health that I need support with now or I need help with? Um, and that could be all sorts of different things. It could be that maybe you've chosen your main healthcare provider. You've chosen perhaps to be uh, under the care of um, some kind of specialist um, consultant um, or you've chosen a, a surgery, something like that. And now you're looking for something to support you in being able to do that as efficiently and as, as um, healthily as you possibly can. Be, be um, conscious of what it is that you're after um, with each healthcare uh, professional. Um, and don't just accept the first person that comes along because they might not be right for you. Um, you know, what's right for me isn't necessarily right for Regina if she's choosing something or, or Caroline if she's choosing something. Um, so it's a bit like an interview process. I think that, you know, when you're buying a car, for example, you might go to several different car dealers and you might be asking them roughly the same questions about the different cars, different models. But you're you're always got in the back of your head what's right for you. Um, and that's what you need to do with your health as well. Um, one of the first things I would be thinking about, um, for example, is if it's an ongoing relationship, you know, if this is something that's going to involve ongoing treatment of some sort, you want to actually, first of all, make sure that you actually feel some kind of connection with the, the, the healthcare professional that you've chosen. Um, you know, that you feel relaxed, that you feel you trust them, that you can talk to them, that um, there's a, an empathy there, if you like. And that's very important in an ongoing relationship. Now, if it's choosing a surgeon and you're very unlikely to have an ongoing relationship with, with him or her, then you might say, well, I don't really care actually about that rapport. What I'm more focused on is actually their expertise. Uh, I mean, I think you'd want to check that out anyway. Um, but in the case of surgery, you know, checking out um, their expertise in the particular surgery that you're going for. Um, now, often we can, you know, we, we trust our, maybe our GP um, to, to have done that due diligence. Are we right to do that? Um, you know, because they will might be asking different questions to you. So I want to encourage you to actually 
um, start thinking about if you have any health issues or if you're thinking of working with any kind of healthcare professional, just journal or write down and what it is that you want to be asking, what, what are your interview questions, if you like. So you're the employer and the healthcare professional is your potential employee. And I think having that in mind might change that dynamic because often there seems to be um, a relationship between a healthcare professional and a client that is a little bit well, it's, I don't feel it's the right um, relationship. We can often feel, you know, a bit cowed, a bit like, oh, God, they're, they're the professional. Better not ask too many questions. Better not um, uh, rock the boat. You know, don't want to pee them off in any way um, because I'm lucky to to have found this person. And that automatically means that you're on the back foot, really. Um, and you're not often, you're often leaving uh, a consultation with somebody, not having got out what you want um, and the answers to the questions that you have in your head. So I'm just going to invite you to just remember that it's the same, if not more important, than buying anything or employing anybody to help you in any way. It's important that you remember that you are the employer and the healthcare professional is the employee. Um, and Regina's saying, this is so important. You're absolutely right. Research is key. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think that we can often get hurried too much. We can we can be pulled into a sort of sense of, oh, I'm very lucky to get a consultation with this person. Um, I haven't got time to, to do any proper research or I'm not really sure what research I want to be doing or where. Um, it's important to to find out, you know, basics. How long has this been pers this person been working for? Where did they train? Have they any experience in particularly what you want them to be doing? Um, asking for their opinion as well um, about what they feel may be the outcome for you, the positive outcome, obviously, um, if you are going to be taking whatever treatment they're offering. Um, and equally importantly, what's the outcome in their opinion if you don't have the treatments that they're offering? Um, ask them for evidence, ask them for research, um, if they can give you references um, to any studies or any um, clinical evidence that the treatment that, that they're offering you has actually been effective in the specific case of whatever it is that you're um, experiencing and shop around. You know, when we're looking for, um, you know, a new dress even, we might often go to several different shops and compare prices and compare um, quality of the fabric. You know, we do we do lots of comparisons um, and we work out what, what's the best um, price for us and what's the best um, quality for us. Um, we, all of those things, we do it kind of automatically with other things. And we do know that we are the buyer, basically, um, and, and the retailer is the seller. Well, it's the same in the health system. Whatever health modality you choose, you are interviewing somebody for the job of your healthcare provider in whatever um, guise that takes. Um, so just actually uh, remembering that, um, I think, may change the dynamic. Um, so good morning, Marin. You're welcome. Marin saying... Um, Stay away from medical professionals as much as possible and stick to natural health. OK, well, that's that's your opinion, uh, Marion. And, you know, we all have different opinions and we're all entitled to have those different opinions. What I would encourage more than anything else is to just do your research and decide 
for each individual case that um, you're seeking help for, that you weigh up the evidence and the research and and listening to your heart as well um, and work out which is the best route for you. Um, and Caroline is saying, I was told I had lymphoma and given the idea that there was no time. I told the consultant I needed time to do my own research and she made it clear she was cross about this. Um, I did my research around my lymph and to cut a long story short, I did not have lymphoma. Quite different. And I never looked back. Yeah, very good point, Caroline. Um, when we go to any healthcare professional, um, most of the time um, it's an opinion. It's a it's a you know a, a weighed up opinion based uh, on the um, experience of that particular person in their professional capacity, and that's why often we're encouraged to seek more than one opinion, and we often forget that little bit of language there that it is an opinion. It's not necessarily absolutely fact. It's an opinion based on that person's view of the world. And that opinion can change according to what health modality you are working to. So obviously then that affects how you're treated. And you may decide for various reasons that um, the destination that you want to get to, you know, the... the um, the health goal that you want to reach actually involves some form of um, pharmaceutical medicine. That's entirely your choice. Um, but make it an informed choice and make sure that the opinion that you get is actually supported by more than just um, what that person is saying. Um, make sure that um, you know, if somebody does give you an opinion that you're asking for studies, um, research, whatever to, to support that. And you don't always have to slavishly go through every detail, um, but it does actually help you to to have some kind of idea that this isn't just something that's been plucked out of the air. It is actually supported by some kind of evidence. Um, and Caroline is saying so important to know what your end point goal is. Absolutely crucial because how can you choose the best route to anywhere if you don't know what your destination is? You can't. Um, and you may end up um, going with some kind of um, health vehicle um, because you really like the person. And not necessarily because it is the best modality for you, given what you want to achieve. Also, asking questions like, um, uh, you know, to find out what the, the health professionals views are about working with other healthcare professionals. Um, you know, if you've already decided that you really want to support your immune system, uh, and you want to do that as naturally as possible, or you have decided that your the majority of your treatment is going to be with that in mind, but you have to pick one piece that isn't perhaps quite so natural, um, then you you don't want to be working with somebody who says, I don't want to work with anybody else. You can't work with anyone else unless they can give you very, very good um, support for that, um, you know, good reason. And even that, research it. Um, so you're the interviewer, basically. You are the one who is interviewing candidates to be your health care provider, not the other way around. Much as a lot of people, a lot of health professionals would like you to feel that way. They are your employee and not the other way around. So that reverses the power dynamics. It does put much more responsibility on us as clients or patients. And that is ultimately um, very empowering 
And it is going to mean that we will make, I think, better choices, more appropriate choices, um, more informed choices. Um, and as Caroline pointed out, people make mistakes. We're just people. Everybody you know, can make mistakes. They can make errors of judgment. They can get it wrong. Nobody is infallible. So having a kind of double check system where you are just going, OK, let's let's have a look at the evidence here and let's see, is this in line with what I ultimately want? Is if I take this treatment, if I undergo this surgery, if I do whatever, is this going to get me closer to where I want to be ultimately or is it going to actually take me further away? And actually part of um, being clear about where you want to be going with this is uh, defining the things that you're really not negotiable on and the things that you kind of, yeah, they're kind of up for grabs. I'm not sure about that. I'm willing to I'm willing to listen to, to different views on that. Um, and then you can fine tune your questions accordingly because, you know, um, there are certain things I'm just not going to give way on. And there are other things that, yeah, they're, they're negotiable. So let's see where this person that I'm interviewing fits in with that. Um, I'm reminded of doing um, a birth plan. Very, very similar. You know, um, I found in both my births that sitting down and thinking about doing a birth plan and actually deciding, OK, there are certain things I know are on offer here when you're um, pregnant and you're in a hospital, for example, um, that I know there's no way I want them. I don't care, you know, what's going on. I do not want X, Y and Z. Um, I want them to try X, Y and Z instead or whatever it is. I couldn't have done that if I hadn't actually done some research, if I hadn't actually have, um, you know, been conscious of some of the, just the framework of what was on offer and the possible consequences on both me and my baby of having those, those procedures. Um, so I decided in advance what it was that I wanted and how open I was about some things, but not others. Um, and it was written down. So it's a good way to really make you think about, well, what do I want um, ultimately? And why do I want this healthcare professional to help me do that? Um, what is it that they can offer? Um, so drawing up a set of questions and just getting a feel for that person. How open are they? How well do you trust them? What's their experience in whatever it is that you're wanting from them? Um, yeah, and they might surprise you too, because obviously a lot of um, more the more holistic practitioners will be offering much more than just a form of, of medication, if you like. Um, and often they are a brilliant adjunct to, you know, if you are choosing something like surgery or you, you feel that you need to take some kind of ongoing medication, for example, or treatment, often choosing an, um, a, another holistic therapy will support you in being able to tolerate those choices better and have them um, be more effective, if you like. Um, so be clear about what you want from your health professionals. So I could talk about this for a long time. Do ask me questions. Um, I'm more than happy to, to answer them. Um, and on that score, that this is why I offer a free Q&A call. Um, I've called it an interview call in the in the, the post of this video. But if it, that's, and many practitioners offer that, many holistic practitioners offer that. Um, you're very welcome, Regina and Marion. Um, the purpose of that call is for you to interview me, really, and for me to get a feel for, for what it is that you want. Because sometimes I might say to somebody, actually, I'm not sure that homeopathy or QTT is actually right for you. 
you know, have you thought about whatever the other treatment is instead? Um, I, I'm not shy about doing that because we have to be a good fit. Um, we have to we have to work together to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. Um, so obviously, just having a quick chat with somebody and getting a feel for them and how they work is really, really important. So I'm more than happy to offer that free Q&A call. Um, so if you do want to avail of that, then do click on the link in the post with this video. Um, I don't know whether uh, pharmaceutical um, medicine consultants and doctors offer that as a, a, you know, as something that you could do. Perhaps it's time they started, though. OK, thanks very much for joining me. I'll leave you with that thought. Have a lovely, lovely week and um, enjoy the weather. OK, bye.